Hello fellow Gwent players, wow, it's been a while since I uploaded videos, and more to that later, but right now we got some cards to review for the upcoming expansion, Price of Power, Thanet Coup. We're gonna start off with R2 as a student. I'm gonna do this where I rank. I, I don't do it the way the cards were revealed. I'll do it the way that, you know, I'll, I'll go from the lowest rarity to the highest, and I'll, I'll review the highest rarity cards later and the lower rarity cards earlier. So we have a bit of a more balance in the video. So R2 is a student's patience order range. Boost an ally unit by zero. People are saying it's kind of a worse uh, the Banard Adept, I think this is honestly on the same level because it doesn't actually have a ceiling that is dependent on what the opponent plays. So I think this card is just really, really good. It's one point per turn engine with a lot of carryover value with cards like Shani, but then you have to kind of decide which row you want to play Shani on, whether it's the front row for the, the Banard student or the back row for the Aratusa student. So... I think this card is, is really solid. If I were to give it a rating, I, I'd probably give it a... I'd probably even give it a 7 out of 10. I, I think the Artuza student has proven to be quite a strong tool. And at 4 provisions, this kind of puts all the other 4 provision boost cards. For example, like a Kedweni Sergeant is just a, a, a worse version of this in every sense of the way at this point. So, yeah, it's kind of bad. But it is what it is, so yeah. Uh, the power creep has been quite real, this expansion, for some factions at least. But we'll get to that later, we'll get to that later. Next up we have the Thanet Turncoat. Deploy given enemy unit spying, order conspiracy, damage an enemy unit by one. Whenever an, enemy, uh, whenever an enemy unit gains spying, reduce this cooldown by one. Cooldown two. So this is very much like something like Elven Swordmaster, but it has a deploy, and that makes it really, really strong. It also synergizes really well with the cards that are coming up for Nilfgaard. And yeah, I mean, this card is actually just a very solid engine. It works really well with the uh, Spy Archetype. It helps set up Coop better than something like a Mage Torturer, even though Mage Torturer has her own powerful sort of setup that you can use. So Mage Torturer might actually see some play in the future. I think genuinely this is a big step up in the right direction for uh, the Spy Archetype. The only thing that still is the biggest problem with the Spy Archetype is even made more obvious here is that the Spy Archetype has Aristocrat Soldiers and now it has Agents in it. And the problem with that is basically that these three don't actually synergize that well with each other. You have Ramon Tarkinel, who can only target the Enforcers. Then you have the Aristocrats, with work, which work with Ball the best. So, and now you have the Agents, which technically don't really work with anything except for Usurper. So, that's kind of like my biggest issue with the Spying Archetype, is that the Archetype has the same keywords, but their sort of tags aren't colliding with each other, and I think that's a bit of an issue that the archetype has, but this card is definitely really strong. Uh, it, 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 you can't, the problem with it is you can't really play it proactively. You do want to get value out of its deployability, so there is that. It, it is a lot better when you go second, and yeah, I mean, the damaging a unit with uh, spying kind of can be a bit awkward, but it should be possible in the deck that you're going to play this in, so... Yeah, I do not mind this card at all. As for ratings on this card, I would give it a, I'd give it a solid 6, I think. Uh, I'm not sure how good this is going to be or how auto-include this is going to be. I think there is still better Nilfgaard 4 provision cards that you can play this with, but it'll see some experimentation, and maybe it'll, maybe it'll actually be good. I mean, the deployability doesn't seem terrible, setting up something like Coop or, you know, one of the cards that's going to come up later. So, yeah, that's definitely something that's worth considering, so I, I'd give this a po on a positive note. I'd say this is a 6 out of 10. Next up we have the Elven Seer. When you target this unit with a bronze special card, spawn a play copy of that special counter 1. So this doesn't reset its counter, so you can use this ability only once. At 4 or 5, it, it is kind of bad, honestly. It, it, it boosts up your gourd, obviously. It's very easily dealt with, though. Against a Maddox deck, this just dies immediately. I mean, you kind of play it in this sort of overload engine deck where you have these kind of power crept engines with the 
Dolbothana Whispress, the Dolbothana Mage, I think her name is. But yeah, and, and then you obviously also play this card. But the problem with that deck is you have a lot of five provision cards where you have to kind of start using four provision cards that you're not allowed to use as many four provision cards as you want. And that's kind of like the deck building cost at the end of the day as well, because then you can't polarize the deck as much as you might want. So I don't know, maybe this card is going to be okay at five, at, at four or five. I think it's a bit underwhelming because your opponent can very easily deal with this. In a lot of situations, he can lock it, he can damage it by four, he can go horsen on it, he, eh. he can go freak show on it, he just needs to spend two coins to do that. There's a lot of things that make this card bad, and I, I don't think it's going to be that good. I would probably give this a 3 out of 10. Yeah, something along those lines. And the last sort of common card is the... Dvim Vandra, deploy melee set an ally scenario to the final chapter, deploy range, refresh the order of an allied location. Now this, this is really hard to evaluate, honestly, because I feel like a lot of decks that play scenarios tend to play, I mean, the one deck that 100% plays scenario is usually going to be Nilfgaard, and you kind of want to keep that deck devotion, so you're not going to really see this in Nilfgaard. It's probably going to be best within Skellige, like resetting Gettyneth to give you a Mardrome. Because I think that is actually the strongest final chapter of all the scenarios. It could also be Syndicate, where you can sort of spam a bunch of Slice Seductresses. So yeah, I think this card isn't awful. But, and also, uh, resetting the uh, location order seems pretty cool, especially maybe with something like uh, Land of a Thousand Fables, that could be kind of funny. But, yeah, I mean, this card will definitely see experimentation, whether it'll be competitive, I don't know. It could see play, as I said, in maybe something like Skellige. I could definitely see this card being played as maybe a one-off, because you kind of do just want to play this as a one-off. You never really need this. You, you don't want two copies of this. It's too conditional with the location and the scenario being in play. And yeah, that's that's kind of what makes this card kind of weak. But at the same time, it's pretty okay. You could also... Oh, wait, no, no, no. I was thinking of Portal, but Portal isn't, isn't a location. So yeah, uh, the card's all right. I would probably give it a 4 out of 10. It, it'll see some niche play and it'll, it'll be good as a niche card. But in itself, it won't really be that great honestly and it can feel awkward at times I think as well uh, because of the lack of tempo that it provides. Alright next up we have practice makes perfect. Shuffle an allied bronze mage to your deck and play a random bronze mage from your deck. Boost the unit you played by zero. Increase the boost by one for each unit with patience you played this game. So we have a four provision decoy with this, basically. You can remove a unit from play and then replay a unit from deck or like just play a unit from deck that is a mage. And it has to be a bronze mage. So a lot of people are saying this works with something like a Banard, uh, Banard Teacher? Banard Tutor, sorry. Banard Tutor, that's his name. Where you remove a two point unit and you, you're gonna get like a seven. But in round one, like this card, this card is kind of garbage, honestly. I, I don't think this card will ever see play and there's, unless there's like this very niche combo that you can pull off with it. But I wouldn't, I, I don't see any sort of combos you can really do with this because we've gotten a lot of the mages as well are boost engines. For example, the damn sorceress or the Artusa Adept. So the only like plausible targets for this are the, the the both the students, both Banart and Artuza, and I guess the Banart Tutor, as I mentioned. I, I'm not sure if there's any other bronze mages within Northern Realms that you want to get, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like a worse, it's both a worse teleportation 
because the target is random, the, the card that you're going to play from deck is going to be random, or it's a worse uh, contest, right? It's a worse casting contest because casting contest plays for five tempo in the worst case scenario. This could play for zero tempo in the worst case scenario. And I, I, I don't think you want to be playing a potentially zero point card in your deck. It's kind of bad. I, I honestly give this a zero out of 10. Like this is, I've, in, a, in an expansion circle where there's four, uh, where there's three mini expansions and they release a card like this, and there's no clear sort of, uh, there's no clear, what, you, what, do you, what am I gonna call it? No clear uh, combo potential with this. I don't really see a point why they printed this card or why they can't just, you know, make a better ability with, because the previous set of, in Price of Power had such major power creeps with things like Blightmaker or the Witch Apprentice in the bronze package. And then they would go ahead and print a bronze that's this. I feel like there's a lot of inconsistencies going on here because like the power level on this set feels a lot worse, especially with a card like this already being one of the four cards for an entire faction. and and. You're you're pretty pretty much hoping that the rest of the cards are good for your faction if if one of the cards is this. So it doesn't feel too great if this is if you're a Northern Realms main and you see this being the new card that you get as the rare. So yeah, I'm, I feel sorry for Northern Realms cards. I think this card is literally just bad. Maybe I'm just not seeing the crazy combos in front of my eyes here, but I, I just think this card is complete filler and just has the same sort of. It has the ability of a new card, but. It feels like a base power card on surface level. And next up we have Master of Puppets. Shout out to Bomblin for putting in some nice effort for the reveal. Did appreciate it since, you know, I didn't get to do a reveal this time around. Master of Puppets. Order sees a bronze enemy unit then moves self to the opposite row. Cool down two. Love the art. Honestly, I think this is one of my favorite Gwen arts. It looks really, really cool. I, I'm really looking forward to what the premium of this one looks like. I, I, by the way, I haven't talked about the art. Apparently, like, there's a lot of controversy around the art style. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll talk about this as well. Uh, it, it's most, mostly it is, uh, I think it's, it's this card. It's the Dim Veandra and the art who's a student. And I do slightly agree with the fact that the art style feels a bit off with Gwent. But at the end of the day, the moment this turns premium, nobody's going to care what the art actually looks like because I'm getting this premium because this premium is going to look sick. And this is also going to be a sick premium. So if the art style is a bit different, it's also kind of like the the shape of the face is also very different from the usual realistic faces that we have within Gwent with the very, you know, narrow uh, cheeks. And as someone who did his A-levels in art, I mean, this is still brilliant art. It's just that I think with the deadlines and the lack of time they had with this expansion, uh, there, there is definitely going to be some inconsistencies with the art since the artists probably are going to be working on some other stuff so they have to take other lines or other ways to pr get this art out as fast as possible so they have to take a more unreal... I mean, you compare her face, like this sheep looks Gwent and this part does not look Gwent. It's just that the faces are a little different. And they're more cartoonish, and, and Gwent isn't, you know, known for its cartoonish art style. It's a very realistic art style, but, I mean, as long as it's... I, I mean, some of the cards do look a bit too unrealistic, and a bit too, you know, artsy, one would say. But, I mean, I don't mind it. it it's a... Like, why... I mean, I love the Gwent art. We have so many good arts, and this isn't terrible art as well. Like, it's still good-looking art, and it's gonna look banging in premium. So, if you guys are sort of hating on... Don't hate on the artist on this one. Like, this is still amazing art. It's it's just... 
I understand why people think this is different art style from the usual Gwent cards, and it, and but like, come on, it's who cares? It's it's a card game. <laughs> it's it does, like who actually cares? <laughs> like actually, but yeah, let's talk about this actual ability now that I kind of swayed away from <laughs> the the actual card ability. Seize a bronze enemy. Uh, yeah, uh, seize a bronze enemy unit, then move self to the opposite row, cool down two. This is pretty hard to evaluate. Arguably the hardest card to evaluate that there is in this set so far because because it's just I don't know. It there's so many instances where this can be good and there's so many instances where this could be garbage. It, it really is kind of it's an extreme meta call, first of all. Also, it's really easy to remove at 4 power. It, it's very similar to the Master of Disguise. If anybody remembers, the old Master of Disguise used to be kind of like an Ivar order ability. And this is kind of crazier, but also not crazier, if you think about it. So, th there's a lot of... This definitely has a lot of meme potential, though. You can kind of like mess around with this for sure. It's going to be quite funny to use this 100%. Maybe maybe something like Petri Filter Nilfgaard might become a thing. But the thing is you don't want to use Petri's Filter on it because this this boot gets boosted by Petri's Filter. So I don't know. This card is incredibly hard to evaluate because of how awkward it can feel and the fact that Nilfgaard doesn't really have any seize opportunities. You would have to set up a defender for this. So, I don't know, it, it, it could be kind of nuts against something like Syndicate where they have Sea Jackals and they spend really tall with those, but yeah, it, it's definitely, uh, it'll see experimentation and it'll, it'll see some, I'm, I'll definitely try some meme nonsense with this for sure, but yeah, I, I don't think this card will be competitive. And here we have Orb of Insight, the last rare card, boost an allied unit by 2 and give it vitality 2. While in your graveyard, remove a counter whenever you play a special card. When the counter reaches zero, play this card and give it doomed. This is a... A lot of people on Reddit are saying this is a garbage card. And I have to agree to a certain extent. It plays for four tempo at six provisions. And after you just play three special cards... Three! You need to play three special cards. I mean, it's kind of crazy with the Elven Seer, where you can kind of put two of this card in your uh, in your graveyard, and then you get to basically play, what is it, 4 plus 16, so 21 for 11, which is kind of crazy. But you do have to meet the requirement here, and you could use this as carryover as well, which is kind of interesting as well. This card has cool design, but I think the numbers are a bit off. If I'm honest, at six per this could might this might as well just be a five provision card. Honestly, I don't think people would be that upset if this was five provisions. Maybe this card's this card is also kind of hard. Like people are kind of jumping the shark a bit too early on this one. I think this could honestly be a decent card, but at the end of the day, Gord is already a really good finisher by itself, and, and making him even bigger is kind of overkill at this point. But honestly, I think with this card, we have to see how it plays out in the actual games, or in the actual meta. So yeah, gonna be interesting to see how, how well this does, and how how much you can actually pull off with this. As for rating on this card, I probably have to give this like a 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10 is, uh, I think, fair like it can be kind of good in niche situations or certain situations where it can create double its value like with the elven seer so yeah it does have potential to be completely nuts but it is quite conditional it doesn't play for that many deploy points or deploy value so yeah orb of inside not that great of a card all right let's move on to the epics starting with leticia charbonneur Patience, order range, at the end of this turn, patience value of allied units is increased by one instead. So this is a card that you can super greed. This is a, this is kind of putting the whole archetype together, the whole mage archetype. The opponent 
kind of needs to deal with this. This is a really, really scary card, especially with something like Gerhardt. You know, Gerhardt is already really good, and with this it gets even better, dude. Like, you can make your Gerhardt play like a 9 provision card on Deploy. It's pretty nuts if you think about it. And also, uh, cards like the Students and the, the both the Students, even Istrit is really, really strong with this one. So, yeah, I think in general this card kind of ties the whole Student, or sort of not Student, the Mage Archetype within NR together. As a 7 provision card, 6 body, you can't kill this with a, you know, 5 damage removal. You need to have something like Parasite or Decoction to deal with it. So that's also really good, or you need a lock, obviously. But if your opponent locks this, you're not really that upset, if I'm honest. So yeah, Leticia, definitely a very, very strong and scary card, for sure. Definitely, I mean, if I were to give it a rating... Wait, ah, oh, shit. If I were to give it a rating, I would give this... I mean, it could be... It's, it's either a 5 or a 6. I'd probably give it a 5.5. At the end of the day, it still plays a 6 for 7. You can't really argue with that. It's an incredibly slow card. But once it gets going, it, it, it can be really, really devastating. But I don't think it'll be competitive. I don't think the sort of whole mage archetype within Northern Realms will be that great as much as, you know, something like Witcher in Northern Realms was. But yeah, this is still a pretty solid card, I must say. Next up, we have Fur Cart. Deploy, play a special card from your hand, then draw a card. Whenever you play a special card, give spying to a random non-spying enemy unit. This card is really cool. I really like its effect. It thins your deck by one. You can sort of tutor out... I think the devs confirmed that if you use this with Yenvo, you're not going to draw the card that you Yenvo. I mean, Invocation, Yennefer's Invocation, if you guys don't know what I mean. So that's something that would have been really good with this card. As for now, Nilfgaard has one good spell, but you're probably going to play this with, with like just decent spells realistically. Like, it's a three-body on a spell that thins your deck by one. There's not really much wrong with this. Also, it gains spying value immediately, because you're going to obviously play the spell that you drew or played with this card. So, Fur Cart is really, really strong for sure. I, I definitely do like his effect. And I mean, Nilfgaard so far seems like a pretty strong faction as far as these reveals go. So, I, I, I'd give this a solid. Yeah, I, I'd give it a 7. I wouldn't say it's OP or like auto include, but in Spy decks, you'll definitely play this. In Nilfgaard spell decks with like Alzer, you're definitely playing this. So, yeah, 100%. Also, it's special cards, so it can actually also draw tactics. I didn't actually consider that. So maybe it goes up to an 8. Because, like, even in, ta like, in tactic decks, a card like this is really, really strong because your tactics are, high, like, high control value, but they don't play for any tempo. With this, you get a 3-point body and the additional control that the tactics can give you. So, yeah, definitely would say this is an 8 out of 10. It works within tactic and it could just be a solid little thinning tool in a hyper-thin deck as well if you need it. Say, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty good. I like this card. Next up is the Salve Einmit. Alright, wait, let, let's actually try to pronounce this one. Salve Einmit. 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 I think. Boost an ally unit by 6 at the end of your turn. If this card is in your graveyard, transform self into Sayodhanmit Unity. Unity, while in your graveyard, remove a counter whenever you play a special card. When the counter reaches 0, summon self from your graveyard to your ranged row. So this is kind of like a Crow Mother slash Redanian, uh, Flying Redanian. And it's kind of worse than both. Because Flying Redanian, your opponent can't really interact with it apart from Squirrel. That's literally the only card that stops Flying Redanian from coming out. And you not making 9 coins, but you're playing Syndicate. How are you not going to get 9 coins? You'd probably have to sequence a little different to get the boat out sometimes. And that might lose you a few points. But usually, you, you should be able to get that boat out for sure. 
In Skellige, the thing is with Crow Mother, you kind of have to draw her early. That's her the biggest issue. But she pops out the first time you play an alchemy card. This needs three specials to be played before it actually comes out of your deck. And the only real synergy it has for it to come out twice is with Elias. And the thing is also, with all these other cards, like Flying Redanian comes out immediately and thins your deck by one. This does not have a tutor. And if your opponent squirrels this card, your his squirrel played for two points less, but he spent five less provisions to counter the card. So the card in general is actually kind of bad. I mean, yeah, it's good carryover sometimes, but the condition for this carryover to be met is very hard. In a short round three, it's very unlikely that you're actually getting this condition off with playing three spells in one round. Oh, I guess the counter can carry over still, right? So that, that does make sense. But Skirtel doesn't have ways to destroy their own units. So this is not that good of a card. Also, it's not tutorable. Like, Redanian doesn't need to be tutored. Maddox doesn't need to be tutored. I mean, you need to draw a bomb, but you're going to play a bunch of bombs with Maddox. So the high there are, there are high odds of you finding Maddox. You don't want to use Oneromancy for this, realistically. So this is kind of like a Dead Man's Tongue that doesn't play for as much as Dead Man's Tongue. And when you play it, it kind of just plays for three extra points, whereas Dead Man's Tongue gives you two, ex uh, two thinning, and Dead Man's Tongue is two provisions cheaper. I don't know why they printed it like this, honestly. This card feels really bad for an expansion. Like... I'm comparing it to like the last set of cards that we got from something like Nilfgaard or Northern Realms. Like those were some completely crazy cards that they got that or monsters even. Like those were some completely crazy cards that elevated the faction by a lot. This is not one of those cards. This is a card you can play with like you can try and play two with Francesca maybe. But that doesn't seem that great because Francesca usually just dies Anyway, so yeah, I don't think this card's very good, honestly. Like, you can tutor it, and that's a big problem. Maybe they're going to get uh, give us a tutor for spells with this expansion. That would make sense in this case. But Skirtel doesn't have spell tutors, so that does feel really, really weak. And yeah, that's that's probably the biggest issue that's with this card, is, is literally the fact that you can tutor it and reliably get it out of your deck without using like an Oneromancy. Like with Crow Mother, it makes sense, right? To play Oneromancy for Crow Mother in certain situations because she comes out immediately when you play the alchemy cards. This requires a little bit more than that. So yeah, not the biggest fan of this card, honestly. I'll probably give it a three out of 10. It's not gonna be bad though. Like it, 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 it could potentially, like if you're playing for the full value of the card, you can get it out four times, which is 12 plus 6. So it's uh, 18, right? But that's at, at its best, and that doubles up on its provisions. But that's in the best case scenario when you're playing a deck with Elias as well, which you are very likely going to do with Elves, I think. You want to get as many of these uh, ambush cards, uh, sorry, the Elven Dead Eyes out as possible. So yeah, that's my opinion on this card. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is the first legendary of Price of Power. It's Tessiah de Vries. Deploy at the end of this turn. Reset the order of all allied mages that used their order during this turn. Mother of conditionalness. This is so bad, isn't it? Right? It, it feels really, really bad. At, at 12 provisions. Because... The thing is, it's not just resetting the order of the allied mages. That would already be really conditional. They had to be used this turn. So you have to hold on to your gel Gellert. You have to hold on to your mage, uh, your students. You have to hold on to all the other mages that would have the order. Also, uh, Shile, I guess, also works, which is kind of funny. And I guess Damned Sorceress as well. But you'd have to hold on to them and wait for the turn where you play this card. And this card is over. Like, if if this card works, if, if you actually manage to get value with this card, you're winning a game by 20 points instead of 10. 
there's a lot of better things to do with the provisions, with the 12 provisions. Like, you might as well just use Viraxis, right? If you if you want to reuse Gellert, you might as well just use Viraxis because Viraxis just comes down immediately playing for 6 plus 6, 12 on Gellert. Or you can be greedy and wait for maybe two more turns for him to get maybe a 6 provision spell. And yeah, that's pretty much why this card is bad. I think this card is really, really weak. In general, the whole Northern Realm set for this expansion was really, really poor. Like, none of these cards are autoing. There, there, there's no Gellert, right? Last expansion, they got Gellert, and that card just completely busted. This time, they got nothing, actually. Like, they actually got completely screwed over, and... Th yeah, they don't have a single good card, I feel like, this set. I mean, they have decent cards that will see play, but this card will not see play. I I'll be honest with you. This, this card is very weak very very bad i'd give it a two out i might even give it a one out of ten i mean i'm not sure if i'm seeing like this hyper synergy that might be the case with this card but yeah this card just it ain't it chief it ain't it no nowhere near the level you want your legendary gold cards to be like compared to man i'm, I'm just like looking at this in a way that the previous like set of price of power gave us a, a good card for every faction. Okay, except for Squirtle, maybe, but... Squirtle's in the dumpster. Who cares about Squirtle? Like, Northern Realms, they, 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 this expansion could have given them some major upgrades, and this is not the upgrade that you want for Northern Realms. And here we have our Taud Terra Nova. Assimilate, deploy, spawn, and play a copy of any non-disloyal unit you gave spying to during this game, excluding self. Excluding self, obviously, because if you're going to play against Nilfgaard and you keep spamming the Artoad over and over again, it's going to get a bit annoying. So, good thing that they added this to the text. But, oh my god, this card is stupid OP. I'm just going to say it right now. This is 10 out of 10. This is such a good card. Like, this card is so frigging strong. It's not even funny how good this card is. Like, wow. It, it's not even create. It's literally play a copy of any non-disloyal unit. So, you can... You're going to have a list of cards that you gave spying to this game. And you can just choose any of them. And this card also has Assimilate. It's a Brathens on steroids for two extra provisions. I mean, if you're Nilfgaard, if you're a Nilfgaard player, you're looking at your typical ball deck and just looking how to free up space for this card. And I'm thinking of just removing Rod, uh, Joachim, honestly. Just remove Joachim, keep the coop. Since you're going to be playing cards that give spying anyway, such as Fergus, and you're going to use Coupon Roderick in the worst case scenario, or on a Duchess Informant, and this card is just going to be major points. I think this card is just insanely good. Like, I don't see a single downside with this card. Even in round one, you can set this card up. You might need to play the Four Provision Bronze, or the Mage Torture, or Fergus all in one deck, so you have consistency on this. But, like, still, that's so... so strong. Like, it, it, like if you're playing the... just one Mage Torturer, and two of the uh, the other Bronze Mage, I forgot what her name was, the Thana Turncoat, the TT, like, you're already setting up three units for this card to be able to just replay. Maybe I'm overestimating this card a little bit it, it's so good like you're not able to replay a Joachim or a Roderick which is why you might cut Joachim and Roderick for this uh, not Rod Roderick sorry which is why you might cut Joachim for this card but still like this card is just so strong in and in and, and it assimilates like in an assimilate deck you're 100% playing this card because you got the mage torturer to set it up anyway and you're just... I mean, the thing is also, I guess... Maybe it's not a 10 out of 10, but on paper, this card seems very strong. Like, if I were to read this in a custom card review, I'd probably be like, Oh, this card's so broken, dude. I'd play this in every Nilfgaard deck. And maybe in, in, in actual games, this isn't as strong, since there's not that many cards that actually give spying, apart from maybe like a Fergus that gets a lot of targets. 
I'm not sure how this works on veiled units as well. I don't think it works on veiled units. So the evolved form of the evolving cards in the devotion deck might not be that great. But imagine just like being able to play a horse and freak show. Uh, sorry, not freak show. Uh, horse and junior with this. You're playing a five. 11 you're playing a 16 already like how crazy is that that's so stupid it's so obnoxious this card's actually so dumb actually actually so dumb yeah this is really really op really really good and the last card i'm not i haven't seen the skellige cards being revealed today yet i don't know what's up with that but yeah, the last card is Simlas Fin Ab Dabair. deploy play all copies of a bronze special card from your deck yeah, this card is really good. I think this card is kind of like the saving grace for Squirtel with this batch of cards. Because you can just double... You can play two Lacerates. That's the first thing that came to my mind when looking at this card. Like, double Lacerate seems pretty crazy, dealing four damage to an entire row. But then, obviously, that's quite conditional. Or you could play something like... In a nature deck, this is really good if you if you have like a Ithne set up and you have you you're able to proc symbiosis like twice in a row. It's it's kind of crazy in that situation as well. You also have just in control decks, you can play double thunder, double rebukes, double bombs, even even double tremors is an option, I guess. Um, it has to be a bronze card, and you do have to sort of set it up. Also, Vanadane. If I if I'm gonna do a vi if I'm gonna do a meme cards video for Skirtel, I'm definitely gonna do one on Vanadane because it has some funny interaction with Simlas because you can kind of try and replay the Vanadane as much as you possibly can, and then <laughs> you have like I don't know how I don't know how many you possibly can have, but I think you can have two, three, two, four, six. You can have eight waylays in one turn, which is kind of funny. <laughs> with like a Gord finisher and even like a Vernasiel to be honest. So maybe that's a possibility. But we'll, we'll just have to see how this card... I mean, this card will be very good in the deck that play it. Play it. You're not going to play this in Dwarves, I guess. But Dwarves is garbage anyway. So yeah, I'd, I'd probably still also give this a 10 out of 10. Card is just very, very good. Its ability is just super strong. There's, there's nothing really to complain about with this ability. Like the... Just playing, I don't know, a Swallow Potion, you're playing a 14 for 12, already seems pretty darn good for me. Also, you can, like, play two spells with Alzer next to, like, next to this card, which is also really, really crazy. So you can get, like, two six provision units, which is really cool. So, yeah, I, I do like this card a lot. It it's it's a very, very powerful card for Skoyatel to have. And, yeah, you, you could kind of, like, with Francesca, like, proc her more quickly as well. I don't know. This, this card just seems very, very, very powerful. Wait a second. What is this? Is this a Skellige reveal? That I actually... Uh, this is going to be my first reaction to this. You guys are going to get an exclusive look at my reaction. Because I was going to end the recording and I just saw... Wait, is this... Did we get two? I think we got two reveals even. Wow, okay, so you guys are getting two extra re revealed cards, which I'm going to see for the first time. Malusine. It's a legendary. Veil. Order. Spawn rain on an enemy row for two turns, then damage self by two. At the end of your turn, damage adjacent units by one, then gain one ga base power for every unit damaged. If any unit damaged was a cultist, refresh Malusine's order. Wait, what? Okay. On an enemy row for two turns. So you're... It's a two point per turn. You're, you're playing a nine, right? Because it's a five and it deals four, technically, then, right? Okay. And the turn damage adjacent units by one. Then gain one base power. Then damage adjacent unit by... So it, it, it actually damages two units. It actually damages two units by one. Then gains one base power for every unit damaged. So, oh. Oh, wait, and if any unit damaged was a cultist, refresh Malusine's order. That's pretty cool, actually. I mean, it's highly conditional, right? So far, all these Skellige cards that we got for this expansion were really conditional cards. Like, 
not that great, honestly. Veil is pretty big, though, for this card, for sure. It's going to be a... Uh, it's Okay, so... It gains... Wait. So it actually doesn't lose points, right? Because it gains the base power for every unit damage. So... Huh, that's... That's so... There's so much to think about with this card. Like, this is really good with Crow Mother next to it. Because you're just damaging Crow Mother and... She might come back at some point. But... I think the rain archetype in general is just not good. I mean, you're creating a lot of carryover if you're damaging two units per turn and you're not actually losing any points. You just have this damage unit for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. And if you if you can set this up as early as possible, you could get like a you could get a big Sigdrifa, like a really really big Sigdrifa's right for this. Which could be kind of cool sort of this Skellige carryover card that exists and i mean i i like the idea it seems like a very convoluted card and, and might not even be good so I, I i if i were to rate i'd give it a four out of ten because i don't think this card is actually that good but it has a very interesting ability and that's kind of cool i mean compared to like Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard just gets good cards every every other faction gets like fun interesting abilities that just get uh, just get just, uh, just have cool abilities that don't have the points to deal with Nilf card at this point. But yeah, cool card, cool card. Let's look at the other one, actually, because there is a second bronze that they did reveal. Can I get the image, though? All right, and the next card is Hermit. Deploy damage self by four. Berserk six. At the end of your turn, damage the unit to the right by one. Then heal self by two. It's a four provision card. So it's it's a lot like okay, so wait. At the end of your turn, damage the unit to the right by one, then heal self by two. Okay, so this is kind of a, a, a wait, isn't this just a bad priest? Isn't this just kind of like a worse Fish Flapper. I don't see a reason why I would run this card over Fish Flapper. Fish Flapper works better with Portal. It works just as good with Priest. Like, why would I cut Priest when... I mean, this, this card seems like a card that needs a second card for it to be worth it. But I don't think it's good. It doesn't look very good, honestly. It feels kind of bad, honestly. The enemy damage the unit to the right by one, then heal self by two. I mean, this this is another one of the, the the like the other card, like the previous card. It requires a board state, and if there's one thing you don't want with engine is for them to have like a board state with more than like three or four cards already in play. Because then you play your proactive plays early and and have to wait on engine value. Which doesn't feel great, honestly. It, it doesn't feel good at all to do it like this. So I think this card is, is bad. I think this card kind of sucks, actually. It's literally just the worst fish flapper, in my opinion. But I might be wrong when it comes to that. But I, I genuinely just think this is the worst fish flapper. Yeah, I... I'd give this like a 1 out of 10. Like, why would I cut Fish Flapper for this? Unless there's like this crazy synergy with healing. I mean, with like Flaminica, I guess it makes sense. Like the healing archetype. But the healing archetype isn't even that good. So I don't know. This card seems kind of garbage. This card does seem kind of garbage. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. This card does not seem that good at all. Okay. I like the first card. This card I did not like at all. Really, really bad card. Should have started with this one, huh? But yeah. All right. And that concludes the first half of the Price of Power Thanet Coop reveals. I'm sorry about the audio. I just realized 
that my microphone was not connected. So yeah, sorry about that. That does tend to happen. So this was just kind of like me being out of the routine of making videos, clearly. And now, speak of, of the routine of making videos, I'm gonna talk about the future of the Mr. Hobble One channel. And I'm just gonna say it straight away, you're not gonna see me as frequently as you used to see me the, in the last sort of like two months prior, you know, where, where I tried to upload a video every day and streams. I mean, I didn't stream as much, but I uploaded a video pretty much every day. And yeah, you, you might have noticed that I haven't done that. And you could also guess that the reason for that is just because I have a lot to do in real life. I have university and I also accepted a job, which I started, which I'm going to start on this Monday. And I've been on holiday. I've been... Uh, it's it's been a lot of stuff and I know it's weird saying that I have uni but my uni is a bit different where I only have like two weeks of summer holiday and yeah during the other time I don't have as much lessons which is where I was able to upload daily content for you and yeah now it's kind of come to the period where all the exams have it's not exams it's just kind of like papers they're all due for now and yeah it's it's a lot of work and I also, you know, have to care about myself and do the things that I want to do for myself. And I love doing YouTube, don't get me wrong. It's just when you're making content like I do and you edit your videos, you're taking actual time to edit your videos and export them this way for most of the videos at least. That's a big chunk of time for something that you're doing in your free time. And now that I'm actually going to be employed somewhere and I still have to do university stuff, I even have less time to do that. And I just never really knew how to explain it to you guys. So I just thought I'd do it like this, where I'm not going to stop doing YouTube videos. Don't get me wrong. I will from time to I'll try to upload at least one video a week, like a meme cards video. It's just that it's going to be really, really, really difficult for me to maintain all of these things at once because I also have a girlfriend and I want to spend as much time as I can with her because, you know, I she's great and I love her. And it's, it's so much at once and it's... I, I really wish I could, you know, I, I wish I had, like, time for YouTube. I wish I could do this full time. It's it's just that also that the the money you make off of doing Gwent videos isn't the greatest. It's it's not the most popular video game. It's also not the most lucrative video game because a lot of the viewer base is adults. You guys are adults. You're not children. You're not asking your uh your parents for their credit card to buy something that I recommend to you guys you guys are adults and you just watch my videos because you want to and you know that financially you might not be able to support me through twitch or something like that i will sometimes try to stream whenever i can and i know it's I, i've said these things in the past and i've not really held up on it because it's just when when I'm talking to you guys in the camera, I'm, I'm kind of like a different person. I need to make promises that I sometimes can't uphold, but I'm, I'm making this to, for myself, sort of like to motivate myself that I at least upload one video a week. I will be streaming when the Price of Power expansion comes out and all of that. It's also that I, I don't really like the current state of Gwent too much. I don't like the direction that they're going in with balance in general right now. I feel like they are power creeping a lot of the game and and they're slowly buffing everything up to a certain level where by the time the next expansion comes they just have to do the same thing again it it, it feels like it, it's kind of just kind of going to snowball and and certain cards are always going to be insane and certain cards are always going to be bad and certain archetypes are always going to be insane and certain archetypes are always going to be bad I don't know. It, it, right now, it just feels like there's... It, it's too much of a rock, paper, scissors. And if you're trying to sort of deviate from that, 
you're you're gonna get punished by everything both rock paper and scissors since solitaire decks are so point heavy and control decks are so control heavy i mean control decks have fallen out of favor but you can't really play meme decks against control decks and mid-range decks are just real arguably the best decks in the game right now with syndicate having two super high tier decks with line pockets and jackpot and yeah but but back to like the main topic of genuinely the future of this channel i won't stop as i said but i i i didn't really know how to tell you guys that i have all of this stuff going on i, I probably said it in some other some video in one of the custom card reviews that i am quite busy right now and that i won't be uploading as much it's it it feels really bad because i really love doing this and and Waking up every day knowing I was going to make a YouTube video and making the video, making the intro, editing all of it, and then uploading it, reading your guys' comments, seeing that it got like more than like 2,000 views. Like that's that was such a good feeling. And it's just that right now I need to focus on other things in life. And maybe I will come back full time to YouTube when I have the chance to do it, right? And when... I realize, okay, I have time on my hands to actually sit down, make content for you guys. And I also want to use the time that I have to make better videos. So I'm not talking about like Gwent videos, but actual like proper gaming videos or like proper film reviews, because that's always what I've been interested in, in reviewing films. Maybe I will start to go to the cinema more often. Now that I have a job, I'll also earn more money. I'll, I'll have more, you know, money in the pocket and I'll be able to actually use the money to go out to the cinema pretty much more than usual. And then I'll be able to, you know, review movies. And also I'm moving out. Is that something that I mentioned? I, I'm actually moving out of here, which also is very, was very time consuming organizing all of that getting all that stuff done and we still have to you know do the moving out part because you know i still have the green wall behind me i won't be having that in future videos i think when the expansion drops i won't have that background anymore and yeah it's it's tough for me to you know give you guys this news because i mean it, it, it's i know you guys lo like you like my content a lot of you guys enjoy the content that i make and I, I am a part of this Gwent community that we have and meme cards videos. I know a lot of people enjoyed those and I enjoyed those. It's just that, yeah, as I said, I need to currently focus on other things. And I hope you guys understand that. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was, you know, not very high effort or happy. If you did, please leave a like and you could you could still subscribe to me. And I will definitely see you guys soon.